Okay, so um, I follow in the estimation here in terms of uh, estimating the VIX in Excel, I follow in line with um, Arnold and Earl 2007, their paper calculating the VIX in Excel. Um, I do make one small, cha two small changes. I'll show where, I think it's page seven, actually page six. And uh, uh, so where is it different? Okay, so this is the original code here, um, or the original set of figures. Uh, my figures uh, in the spreadsheet with the updated uh, Arnold spreadsheet, if we look here, um, Okay, the figure I have here for the put option is 124.38 and in Arnold he has uh, 4.38 so he's just missed uh, something just to, so we have a misprint. Then uh, in terms of the I implemented this originally uh, for inputting into cell F13 if B13 is equal to B43 so if I go into F13 F13 here, F13, right, so this cell here, F, and then come down to 13. I followed in line with um, uh, Arnold, he had originally put in B. Uh, I've changed that here to, so in the original Earl Arnold, that was, um, for F13, okay, we had B43. And in the updated version, I've put E43. So it's E, E, uh, keeping in mind that if we look here at um, um, E43, uh, right, where do we get that from? Let's come down a little bit. E43 is equal to our E43, is this one here, as opposed to the B43. Okay, so it's a small change um, and it's, but it does change the estimation overall. Uh, as you can see, in the, if I had followed through with that estimation, I would have got 25, 29, but uh, actually the, the correct value would be F, it uh, would be 25, 36, and that in fact is what Arnold also estimates in his overall estimation for this VIX, he also is getting um, t uh, 25, 36 um, as well. Okay, so um, I'm content to make those changes. Um, I don't think I, um, uh, it, I, I think that the changes are, uh, are are necessary. Okay, so it's just here and here that I make the change in terms of the um, overall estimation. Okay, so essentially, in terms of what we're trying to do here, right, again, I might point out as well, I checked the numbers, there is a, in, a, there's a book, I'll just make a note. Okay, so in this book, uh, Option Pricing Models and Volatility, uh, both Fabrice Ra and uh, Gregory Weinberg, in their chapter 11 of this book, they also set out the same example. Um, for running an estimate of the VIX model. Now they do it in a different fashion. They use VBA. I won't go into that uh, here, but this is the um, their set of figures that they set out. Um, and again, they have um, risk-free rates and so on. Um, current time, 8.30, same exercise prices. Um, and they get a figure of uh, 2536 also. So this figure that's given here in the um, Fabrice Roy and uh, Gregory Weinberg, in their chapter 11, they make the same estimate um, for the VIX index and they get, using the same data, they get 2536. So uh, I'm relatively comfortable that the estimation that we have here with 2536 um, is fine, okay, um, that it's correct. The difference here between Ar Arnold and Earl and in the compared to the textbook is this textbook uses VBA, whereas uh, Ar the advantage of using Arnold and Earl is it's purely Excel based and in that sense it's uh, more easily tractable 
from the perspective of the user. Okay, so we've worked out T1, we've worked out T2, we've figured out the relevant exercise, we've figured out, if you like, K, the K0, we've figured out um, uh, F1, F2. Our, now we've got to estimate the this term here, right? And what this term represents is it's the sum of the mid prices. Okay, so we've basically, we've got to get the out of the money options that revolve around um, the 900 figure here. The functions are given, so maybe I won't focus so much on the functions, but just basically explain what's happening. We have to use the out of the money pot data, which is basically this for the first contract, the out of the money pot data are these figures here, right? And... Um, we let's see okay and again we have the same here the out of the money call data are these figures here okay so that's what's got to be incorporated in to our estimate right okay so when we're taking the mid price the mid price the midpoint of the bid and the ask we're actually taking these and how do we select them well the criteria is they have to be out of the money options okay and then this middle one, it's, well, which of the two? This is at the 900 strike. We take the average of these two. We sum these two, divide by two. And that's where I'm getting the 18,195. So basically, the mid prices are these figures here. And then this figure of 18,195. And each of these are being multiplied, respectively, by the change in delta. So the step change going from here to here to the next exercise is always 25 and then we're dividing that by k squared okay so if you like um this segment here that we're estimating right is captured in this function here okay so if, we, if you want to track that same now the same below right we have to use the out of the money puts the out of the money calls take the middle value of this call and put we've got to multiply them respectively by the step that the change in the delta and the divided by the relevant exercise squared okay so that's that's following in line right and then to estimate if you like the q is a sigma squared one sigma squared two decimate sigma squared one or let's go with sigma squared two because it's uh, might be easier just for visualizing so to estimate sigma squared 2 let's have a look at that a moment i'm taking 2 2 dividing it by d7 d7 is the maturity for t2 we mentioned that before then we take the sum sum of this range of figures here right that we so if you like the we're taking the sum of all these items here and then we're subtracting subtracting away what subtracting away one over t2 okay so we're subtracting away we're dividing by d2 that's our d7 again so that's t2 and then we have f2 is d47 d47 divided by k0 k0 is e47 we subtract away one we square it we divide divide it by uh, t2 okay so when we make that uh, estimate we have this figure for the data above it's the same um, implementation here no difference really just in terms of visualization a little bit more complex uh, here in the spreadsheet but if i just double click we can see we're doing the same type of it's the same application okay then the second next element of the estimation uh, this 0 0.001 basically if we look at this for a moment in fact maybe I'll just come up here our estimation here again is t1 by sigma by the uh, sigma squared or the variance uh, sigma squared 1 and then we are taking f7 um 
f7 if okay so f7 let's just uh, minimize zoom in zoom out so i'm going to come over here let's escape for a moment and just zoom out a little bit maybe i don't really like doing this but just for purposes so what do we have for running the estimation here we have we have d5, d5 is equal to 0.04 years, f43, f43 is equal to our sigma squared 1, f7 is equal to the 43 days, minus 30 days over f7, again as 43 days, minus f5, f5 is equal to uh, the 15 days. Okay, so let's escape here for a moment, and I'll zoom back in. And come down okay so basically what we're trying to do is we're taking this the sigma squared one the sigma squared two we're interpolating we're setting up an interpolation uh, type uh, construct and i'm waiting by t1 and t2 so we have these numbers as inputs they're already there okay so the estimate if you like this first term is being put here and the second term is going here and we work out individually these terms and then the VIX index is just basically the square root, the square root of the sum of these two terms obtained here multiplied by 365, so 365 divided by 30, again I'm being consistent here, and then we're uh, multiplying by 100 so to express as, if you like, 25%, 25.36. Now what does this VIX uh, give us? The VIX is a measure of the implied volatility. It's traditionally or historically, when this was originally proposed, the VIX was based purely on Black-Scholes implied volatility for at-the-money options. The VIX, more conventionally today, the VIX uh, estimation uses out-of-the-money puts out of the money calls again out of the money puts out of the money calls for uh, two uh, option sets of option chain data both uh, uh, that uh, straddle the 30-day window um, and then we use an interpolation type technique to produce um, the VIX overall estimate okay so the the vix if you like is an estimate of how pricey options are the vix is implied volatility but not estimated in using uh, any specific model and definitely we're not employing here black shows so that's where um there may be some confusion right um and the value that we get here of the 2536 right this estimate we get here is consistent with the value that we have that um, is produced in in uh, Arnold and Hogue, right? So it's the same value that's measured in Arnold and Hogue using the S and P uh, 500. Okay, so final calculation for the fix here was 25.36, and um, also I used uh, same data for uh, and I input it into um, uh, following uh, Fabrice Roy and Gregory Weinberg and the 2536 value for the VIX using that same data is reflected in their results as well. And again, if you like want to compare uh, the, the sigma squared 1 and the sigma squared 2, uh, those values are the same. So just to make the direct comparison that number is the same for uh, Fabrice Roy and Gregory Weinberg this is this figure that we obtained here is also can verify against um, Fabrice Roy Gregory Weinberg and the 2536 is also the same figure um, for the uh, Fab Fabrice Roy and Gregory Weinberg uh, textbook Okay, so you might use this as a, a working example. It's a reasonably good pedagogical tool. It also uh, represents a, a means by which you get some kind of insight into the estimation and also enhances your understanding of what the fix constitutes.